If you've been looking to compare the Asus Tough A15 against the Asus Zephyrus G14 for video editing, photo editing, graphic design, and motion design, then you've come to the right video. I'm going to put these two laptops head to head with Creator Benchmarks, and we're going to find out which laptop is right for you. Let's get rocking. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're gonna find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. Also, if you're curious about the exact pricing of either of these models as we're going through the video, you can head down into the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase through that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Since first releasing my original run of head-to-head -head reviews with the Asus Tough A15, this specific head-to-head -head review has been the top requested comparison coming out of the comment section on my channel. By the way, if you want me to review any laptops head-to-head -head, or you're curious about other benchmark tests, then please comment below and I will see if I can run those tests or head-to-head -head battles for you. Let's dive right in and check out the build quality of these two laptops. The Asus Zephyrus G14 comes with a thin aluminum top cover and a magnesium aluminum alloy bottom cover and keyboard deck. These ultra light durable materials make for a very light laptop, especially compared to the Asus Tough A15, it is a whole two pounds lighter. The Asus Tough A15 has an all aluminum top cover, but the rest of the build is covered by plastic. The plastic used is sturdy and it's thick. It does not have that hollow cheap sound to the touch like some of the other cheaper gaming laptops I've come across. But compared to the G14, it is still a plastic build compared to the G14's all aluminum build. So for the first look and chassis build, I'm going to give my vote to the G14. Concerning the on-the-go capability of these two laptops, the Asus Zephyrus G14 weighs in at 3.53 pounds and it has a thickness of 0.7 inches. Whereas the Asus Tough A15 weighs in at 5.7 pounds at a thickness of 0.98 inches. Concerning the battery life, the Asus Zephyrus G14 will get roughly nine and a half hours of web browsing battery life, whereas it might get about six to seven hours of design and video editing battery life out of its 76 watt hour battery. Whereas the Asus Tough A15 with its 90 watt hour battery will get roughly six hours of web browsing battery life and two to three hours of design and video editing. You may find it odd that the smaller watt hour battery produces less battery life, but this is a common finding amongst most reviewers who took a look at the Asus Tough A15, including Tom's guide. As I open the lid of each of these laptops, which can be done with one hand easily and smoothly, I'm greeted by two different screens and keyboard decks. Both laptops have strong hinge setups. However, I notice slightly more screen flex near the middle of the screen from the Tough A15. The G14 feels much more solid in this area. Concerning the quality of the screens, the G14 certainly outshines the A15 with a 14 inch full HD 16 by nine aspect ratio matte display. The model I'm reviewing comes with a 120 Hertz refresh rate, but you can also get it in a 60 Hertz variant. This screen can reach a brightness of 330 nits at full brightness with a Pantone validated color gamut range of 96% sRGB, 75% Adobe RGB, and 76% DCI-P3, all at an average Delta E of 1.27. Asus does claim a 100% sRGB on their website, but per my test, I was only able to attain the 96% sRGB. But for a laptop this light, powerful, and mid-tier budget-friendly, well done, Asus. Now, for the disappointing news, since these laptops were launched around the same time, and you can pick each up for about the same price and spec structures, then I beg the question, why such a lackluster screen on the Asus Tough A15? If you're enjoying this video and getting some value, definitely press down on that like button and let me know how you plan on using this laptop by dropping a comment below. If you want more content like this in the future, then make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future uploads. Okay, let's get back into the video. The Asus Tough A15 comes with a 15.6 inch Full HD display at 144Hz refresh rate, it can reach 275 nits at full brightness, and a color gamut range of 66% sRGB, 49% Adobe RGB, and 49% DCI-P3. Like I said, not really that impressive, especially at the same price point. 
Now, although these stats are personally disappointing to me, the Asus Tough A15 is a powerful laptop. And as we will get into the performance benchmarks, I think you'll be shocked to see that the Ryzen 7 CPU is able to keep pace with the Ryzen 9 CPU of the G14 in many of the benchmark tests. So hang tight because we are going to get into those in just a moment. Moving on to the keyboard deck, I have to say that the A15 definitely stands out in this category. It has a full keyboard that is beautifully backlit with Aurora RGB lighting that is customizable directly from the keyboard deck. The key press on the A15 is a little on the sharp, snappy side. It is not as soft as I personally prefer, but it still has excellent stable keys that feel strong beneath my fingers. The Zephyrus G14 has a great key press that is just the right amount of soft, snappy key press that I like. Although the simple keyboard layout is spot on and the key press is very nice, I do have to point out that the backlighting is rather subpar. It has light leaks on the sides of the keys, inconsistent backlighting showing through the keys, and in the dark, the silver gray contrast is a little tough to see when typing. But if, like myself, you took a typing class in college, then there's no need to look at the keyboard. So how it feels beneath your fingers is the only thing that truly matters, right? Well, that's up to you. Moving on to the trackpad, I think the G14 has a well-designed trackpad. It has a little bit of a noise to the tap Here's a sample you can take a listen to. Overall, it is quiet when in use, but that slight rattle may annoy some people. I will say the one thing that truly bothers me about it is the size. Because of the 14 inch screen, I would have preferred it if they did not add the extra set of four keys along the top of the keyboard deck and move the keyboard up slightly to make room for a larger trackpad. The trackpad on the A15 is just the right size and my personal preference for a trackpad when comparing an all-in-one trackpad versus a trackpad with dedicated left and right click buttons. Honestly, while designing or video editing on a laptop, it is really nice to have the dedicated buttons compared to clicking on the trackpad. I find that I often make mistakes when dragging and dropping files, creating shapes and design programs, or editing in the timeline of, say, Premiere Pro. So for this category, my hat is off to the Asus Tough A15 for the trackpad award. Now for the port selection, the Asus Zephyrus G14 comes with one USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 display port plus power delivery, one USB-C 3.2 Gen 2, two USB-A 3.2 Gen 1s, a HDMI 2.0 and a mic headphone jack combo. The Asus Tough A15 comes with one USB Type-A USB 2.0, one USB-C 3.2 Gen 2, two USB Type-A 3.2 Gen 1s, an HDMI port, a headphone audio jack combo, and one Ethernet port. Nearly identical ports, although the A15 does have the dedicated Ethernet port. Onto the main event, the performance benchmarking tests between the Asus Tough A15 and the Asus Zephyrus G14. The Asus Tough I'm reviewing comes with the AMD Ryzen 7 4800H, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Ti with 6 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, 32 gigs of RAM, and a 512 gig solid state hard drive. And the Asus Zephyrus G14 comes with a AMD Ryzen 4900HS, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 Max-Q with 6 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, 6 gigs of RAM, 1 terabyte of NVMe SSD, and 500 gigs of SATA SSD. Note that the G14 also comes in a more budget-friendly variant with 8 gigs or 12 gigs of RAM and the Ryzen 7 4800H. And the Asus Tough A15 comes in a RTX 2060 variant. So each of these can be compared to different models, and I will link those in the description below if you're curious about the pricing of them. Now, diving right into the Geekbench test, you can see that the single core performance of the G14 is only slightly outperforming the performance of the A15. This is due to the fact that the clock speeds between the two CPUs are only slightly faster on the Ryzen 9 model. And for the multi-core chart performance, I was honestly shocked and ran the Geekbench multi-core benchmark various times to try and get the G14 score higher, but it would not surpass the score I accomplished on the Asus Tough A15. 
Take it or leave it for what it is. Geekbench gave the tough A15 a better score by over 200 points. On the other hand, Cinebench R20 performed as I would have expected, placing the G14 with its Ryzen 9 CPU above the A15's Ryzen 7 4800H CPU. Now onto the After Effects test, where we see the Asus Tough A15 snagging an 812 score on the standard After Effects benchmark, and the Zephyrus G14 accomplishing a 775. Because the A15 has double the RAM, it was able to squeeze by the G14 with the extra points. For the After Effects rendering test, we see that gap close by a lot thanks to the help of the RTX 2060 GPU in the G14 by scoring a 615 and the A15 scoring a 661. These tests just go to show that it is not always about the most powerful CPU, GPU, or RAM. It is how each of them work together. A lot of people think if they get the Ryzen 9 4900HS that they will blow away everything without a thought. But as we see here, the 4800H is keeping up without too much of an issue. However, it is not all victory flags for the A15. When it comes to the video editing test results, we may see a different story. I want to mention real quick before getting into the full results for the video editing, if you are looking for even more in-depth test results for the Asus Zephyrus G14, such as 3D modeling and Autodesk and component usage charts, you can check out my full review in the YouTube cards above. For the playback tests, I'm going to take a 9-minute 4K clip with a total of 16,177 frames, including 7,240 motion design frames, and run it in the timeline at full quality. The Asus Zephyrus G14 only dropped three frames throughout the entire playback with its RTX 2060 Max-Q. Whereas the Asus Tough A15 dropped 95 frames during the 4K playback at full quality with its GTX 1660 Ti. Both were nearly unnoticeable, but the Zephyrus G14 had better test results. Moving on to the 4K test, I am going to take a 9 minute 4K clip, place it into Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, then export it out of both of those programs at 1080p and 4K YouTube settings. The G14 Premiere Pro 4K to 4K export took 3 minutes and 2 seconds. The A15 Premiere Pro 4K export to 4K took 7 minutes and 20 seconds. The G14 Premiere Pro 4K to 1080p export took 2 minutes and 43 seconds. And the A15 Premiere Pro 4K to 1080p took 3 minutes and 52 seconds. The G14 DaVinci Resolve 4K export to 4K took 7 minutes and 55 seconds. And the A15 DaVinci Resolve 4K to 4K took 6 minutes and 37 seconds. The G14 DaVinci Resolve 4K to 1080p took 4 minutes and 23 seconds. And the A15 DaVinci Resolve 4K export to 1080p took 2 minutes and 52 seconds. The weird thing about the DaVinci Resolve export is the low level of GPU usage and high level of CPU and RAM usage. That is why we are seeing the A15 outperform the G14 here. During the components charts, I saw DaVinci Resolve take advantage of the higher amount of RAM in the A15, which gave a slight advantage on the export time. Now for all of my design and photographer friends considering this laptop, thanks for hanging on till these benchmarks made it to you. In Photoshop benchmarks, the Asus Zephyrus G14 is sitting comfortably in the middle of the test results chart, coming out with a 688 Photoshop benchmark score. And the Asus Tough A15 was able to secure a 759. These laptops will be able to handle Photoshop with great ease, meaning that you will have no problem in any of the Adobe Creative Cloud design tools. No test would be complete without discussing the thermals and noise of these two laptops. During the Premiere Pro 4K export, the Asus Tough stayed fairly quiet at around 49 decibels, whereas the Zephyrus G14 boosted up to 61 decibels during the 4K export. During the export within the Zephyrus G14, I saw the thermals jump to around 95 degrees Celsius on the CPU and then stabilized at an average of 87 degrees Celsius. The Asus Tough A15 shot up to around 93 degrees Celsius and then stabilized at an average of 85 degrees Celsius during the 4K export. Normally I do the whole if this then that outro when comparing two laptops head to head, but for this video, I think it deserves a little more conversational approach. The Asus Tough A15 has stellar performance. It has excellent playback while video editing, absolutely crushes the Adobe design suite, and has a really nice military-like aesthetic on the aluminum top cover. But it, it is rather bulky and has had some complaints about the heating issues. 
But if you consider the numbers I just discussed a second ago, I don't think it is all that crazy about the heat in relation to even the G14. The screen is simply not color accurate and is on the dimmer side of screen brightness. Because of these negatives, I would personally lean towards the G14. With that, I'm not saying that the Tough A15 is a bad buy. It has great performance and a larger screen if that is what you're looking for. But in this head-to-head -head review, the Zephyrus G14 really outshines the A15 overall. The Asus Zephyrus G14 comes with great color gamut range, a bright screen, an all aluminum build. Now the small trackpad and dim spotty lighting under the keys is not impressive, but I guess you can't win them all. But come on, it has fantastic export times while video editing, solid benchmarks in After Effects, Photoshop, and really smooth playback in Premiere Pro. If you're curious about the exact pricing, like I've said, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Overall, if you do make a purchase through that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. That keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. If you wanna watch more videos about the Asus Zephyrus G14, you can click or tap the screen here, or check out another video from my channel over there. Like I said, my personal pick would be the G14, but the decision is now yours. Keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here in the next video.